Hi everyone, welcome back to Nanome. Today I want to talk about this concept of bioisosteric searching, which is actually a medicinal chemistry concept. The context that we'll use in this is we can use a scaffold of a psychedelic like psilocin, but we can find derivatives of psilocin that bind better to the serotonin 2A receptor or, you know, higher affinity psychedelics in a sense. So the concept of bioisosteric searching is the idea that we can create a similar chemical entity to the one that we have, which is psilocin, and we can make derivatives of that that behave um, biologically similar to psilocin. So for example, let me grab a structure. So I have psilocin on my right hand side, and the compound in the middle is a derivative of psilocin or a bioisosteer. A bioisosteer is a compound that should behave similarly chemically to the target compound in hand, which is psilocin. So the only difference between this uh, compound, this bioisosteer of psilocin, is it has this nitrogen right here, this aromatic nitrogen in the middle. And if I look to my left one more time, you can basically take this nitrogen and just push it around the ring. In this, com in this compound on my left-hand side, I have the nitrogen in this position right here, which is also an aromatic nitrogen. So we can basically take these compounds, dock them to serotonin to a receptor and see if they bind better or worse. And that basically is the idea of bioisosteric searching. And it's really useful in making compounds that, you know, once can have, they can have higher affinity to your target receptor. Um, they can have less toxic properties. They can have better pharmacokinetic um, parameters and just a whole slew of things. So let's get looking at the serotonin to a receptor in terms of some bioisosteers. So building on this concept of bioisosteric searching, uh, we're actually going to look at how some of these bioisosteers dock the serotonin to a receptor, which is what's in front of me. And I've talked about this in a lot of my videos, this, uh, this receptor crystal structure. Um, I have it in surface mode right now. And what I like a lot about surface mode is you can actually see how the drug gets inside the receptor. So let's quickly take a look before we go inside. Receptor, and I kind of pull it down like this. If you look at the extracellular space in the top, you can see one, two, three, four. There it looks like there's four sort of holes or cavities where a, a psychedelic or serotonin uh, agonist or antagonist can wiggle wiggle itself uh, into to get inside the binding site. Okay, so now let's pull the receptor to towards us and we'll go inside the binding site and let's see what's going on in here. So this is the orthostatic binding pocket of the serotonin 2A receptor and inside here I have LSD. And the really nice part about surface view is that you can actually see the outline of the pocket, right? You can see the outline of the pocket that the um, the orthosteric binding pocket of serotonin 2A receptor. I think that's super cool about surface. You can almost imagine this sort of baseball glove analogy that I use a lot where, you know, this is the mitt of the baseball glove, right? That'll accommodate the drug or the baseball to fit inside of it. So let's toggle that off and let's toggle on uh, psilocin. So as you can see, psilocin has a glide score of negative 6.31. But what if we want to see a ligand that has a better glide score, which would loosely equate to better binding affinity? So looking for something higher than 6.31. 6.1, that's going to be lower, lower affinity ligands. 6.436, this is actually the only bioisosteer that I found of psilocin that has higher affinity than psilocin itself. So... This is quite a cool pharmacological idea of bioisosteric searching. And bioisosteric searching can not only be used for psychedelics, but it can virtually be applied to any drug uh, design. And with that being said, that's all I have for this video. Till next time, see you guys.